Hi everyone, it's MJ and we're looking at question 8 from the September 2017 paper. Now this question is dealing with the properties of estimators. And we're going to see that part 1 is probably the hardest part and then the rest is fairly straightforward. Okay, so the question starts with saying the following. The two random variables x1 and x2 are independent from each other and follow a uniform distribution where our parameter is greater than zero. And we have our estimator and we're saying that it is equal to 3z and we're saying that z is equal to a maximum of x1 and x2. Now we need to show that the probability density function of z is given by the following. And this is, I mean, the examiners are recognizing that this is a difficult question. Not only are they telling us what the answer should be, so we'll know if we get it right or if we get it wrong. Um, so yeah, not only are they giving us the answer, but they're also giving us a clue. They say by first deriving its cumulative distribution function. So with those two clues, we should be able to give quite a good attempt at it. Um, yeah, it would have been a much harder question if they just said, show the probability density function of z. Um, but now we know what to aim for, and we have our clue, which is to do the cumulative distribution first. Okay, so let's do that. So cumulative distribution denoted by the big Fz, and this is just equal to the probability that the z is less than little z, which, as we've been told, is equal to the probability max x1 and x2 is less than z, which is going to equal the probability that x1 is less than z and x2 is less than z. And we know this because our x1 and our x2 are independent and identically distributed. You do get a mark for saying that, so don't leave that out in the exam. Okay, we also know that this is coming from the uniform distribution and the continuous one, so we want to keep that in mind when we now come here, where we have the following. Um, we have a cumulative distribution z here, is going to be equal to the probability x1 less than z squared. And what that's going to do is, if we look in the book of formulas, we can see what the um, cumulative distribution is of z of the uniform distribution. And actually, let's just get it out. Let me just write it out. Let me find it in the little book. Here we go. So I'm looking at page 13 of the formulas where it will say that f of x equals x minus a over b minus a. But now we're in a situation where b is equal to our parameter and a is equal to the negative of that parameter. And instead of using x, we're using z. So And we're squaring all of it. So we're going to get a situation where we have z minus the negative parameter, so we're going to be plusing that parameter, subtracting that, plus that, we're going to get 2, and then we have it squared. Okay, cool. But we're not out of the woods yet. We're not out of the woods yet. We know that the answer, or the question, is asking us to find the probability density function. And now we have just done the cumulative distribution function. So, how do we get to the next step? Well, we know that we need to take the derivative we know that the probability distribution function is equal to the derivative of our cumulative distribution, which is going to be equal to the following. And this is where you do need to be quite sharp with your maths. You need to know how to handle uh, this sort of derivative, and you'll get the following as your answer. And what is nice, we can now check that with what the question told us, and we can see, oh, look at that. We did get the same answer, so we know we're going to get the four marks, 
to remember you had to have said that in order to get to this step over here. Um, so yeah, that is four marks. That is the hard part of the question. I mean, what we're going to be seeing now, the rest is fairly straightforward. Uh, we want to show that the expected value of z is equal to a third of the parameter. So what we do here, I mean, expected value of z, uh, the general formula is, you know, z, f of z, dz. So this is going to be equal negative theta, positive theta, and we have our z. Then we have, I guess what's nice, the fact that they gave it to us over here is that even if you bombed out in this question, you can now use this for the second part and you're not just going to lose all your marks. Um, but yeah, you do need to, this was a very mathematical question because now what we're doing is we did, we did yeah, the derivative in the previous question, now we're having to find the integral of this which also some people find a little bit of a challenge, especially if they are rusty on their maths. But you should get to the following plus z squared over all there, theta, negative theta. And then you plug those values in and ta-da, and pl plugging those into the z values and you are going to get your theta over 3. Once again, they are being nice in the sense that they're telling us what the answer is because I guess this is going to be leading on to the next question where we have to use that result. So now they're asking us to find the bias. Yeah, that's what the next question is saying. It says derive the bias of this estimator. Okay, and what we know, the, we know the formula of the bias because we have been studying and you know that's the expected value of whatever the function is minus a little parameter. So if we look here, we have the following. We have expected value of 3z minus theta, which is the same as saying 3 expected, sorry, z minus theta, which is equal to 3 times that. We're getting that value from over there minus theta, and we're getting a bias of zero, okay? Which is sometimes a common answer, which is quite nice. Um, so yeah, we've done that. Now it says derive an expression for the mean squared error, okay, in terms of the unknown parameter. Okay, and once again, this is going to be a bit of a tricky question. Um, what we do know, we do know is because the bias is equal to zero, and we can start writing this out here, we know that the mean square error is equal to, you know, the variance of that plus the bias squared g of x. It's our function, but we know that this is zero, so we just need to find the variance of zx, of well, the variance of our little parameter guy, who in this case is the variance of 3z, which is equal to 9 variance z. The reason why we do that is constant. We take it out and we can square it. Okay, but this is where the fun starts. We know variance is equal to equal here, we might as well just write it here, following it on. It's the expected value of the z squared minus expected squared z. Okay, and this is um, what we need to do, what we do need to do is find out what this term is here. We know what this one is because we just, it's that, um, it's going to be squared over 9. Um, but what we do need to do is find this one. So let's go expected value of z squared. That is going to be equal to our integral z squared times our probability distribution function. Um, there, dz, you do the maths and you get the following z to the power of 4. 8 theta squared plus z cubed 
over six theta by our two bounds. And that is going to give us theta squared over three. Okay, which means we can now return to this and we see we have the following nine, we have theta squared over three minus theta squared divided by nine. Where am I getting that from? Where am I getting that from? I'm getting that from this value here squared. Okay, because that is ez and we're looking at ez squared. Okay, so you have this here and tada, our mean square error is going to be equal to two theta squared, which is actually quite, quite large. That is, yeah, that is quite large. Anyway, that is those two questions there done. What we now move on to is going to do basically the same thing again. They've just told us that we now have another estimator where it is equal to 2z. Um, remember, z is still going to stay the maximum of x1 and x2. Uh, different estimator. Oh, yeah, once again, there it says. Okay, show that the bias now is equal to that. We have a little bit of a negative bias. So once again, we have bias of our second estimator is going to be the expected value of this estimator minus that parameter and that's going to be equal to the expected value of 2z minus theta which is equal to the expected value of z minus theta and we know that 2z is equal to 2 theta over 3 minus theta and we have our answer of negative theta over 3, which is what they'd given us. Yay! I don't know why that was two marks. That maybe should have been worth one mark. Um, and then what we know now is that we have to use a more complicated formula for the MSC because our bias isn't zero. So here our MSC is going to be equal to the second estimator. It's going to be equal to the variance of the second estimator plus the bias squared. And this is going to give us a situation of the variance of 2z plus our bias, which is sigma squared over 9. Okay which is equal to 4 times the variance of z plus sigma squared divided by 9. And we have figured out what the variance is um, from the earlier questions. So what we can simply now do is use that to, well, yeah, we have the expected value of the z here. That is our variance. So we just use that over here this time now where we will have 4, let me write it in, 4 sigma squared over 3 minus sigma squared over 9 plus sigma squared over 9 and what we're going to see is that this all comes down to an answer of sigma squared. Okay, cool. And there we are done. Final question now asks us to comment on how good the two estimators are based on your answers in part three and four. So because it's asking us to look at just three and four, don't make the mistake of trying to work out consistency or one of the other properties of the estimator. Use what you have. And what you basically need to talk about in the sense that if we had to compare estimator 1 and estimator 2, we'll see estimator 1 is unbiased, where this one is biased, but this one has a large MSC and this has a smaller MSC. 
unbiased is desirable, smaller MSE is desirable. So each have got a desirable trait, while each of them also has an undesirable trait. And I think yeah, if you state that, you're going to get your two marks for this question. And there we are done. Um, it was a bit of a tricky question in the sense that they were combining a lot of the probability and cumulative distribution function mathematics along with the properties of the estimator. But if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. And yeah, you guys need to brush up on your maths in order to do these questions. Keep well. Cheers.